Hey, this is Tim here. I hope you're doing well. Um, look, uh, this is this is going to be uh, an introductory video on uh, the low-cost mechatronics trainer. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a co uh, four guys who are uh, working on a capstone class this summer, and uh, we put them in this lab here, and they're working away. This is day two. Is it day two of um, them working on the trainer? Um, the first thing, I, I'm not the instructor of this class, there's a, an instructor, Will Schwab, and uh, one of the first things he did is he got the drawings of the exploded assemblies, put them on the wall. Um, we have wiring, we have all the documentation for them. Um, each student, we gave them a, a book of drawings, so each, each student has a, this is Patrick's here, uh, they have a full set of drawings. Um, so we give them lots of space. Um, what else did I do? Um, so this, this group of students is, is building two trainers, two bases, two full trainers, and then two PLC trainers. Um, we have built a, a couple of these trainers already, but these guys are gonna uh, build them from scratch, uh, wire them from scratch, and then do the PLC, the PLC uh, coding, the click, PLC. So um, one of the first things we did is uh, before the, the semester started, I went to Home Depot, got uh, some three quarter inch plywood. Uh, the dimensions are in, are, are in all the drawings. We painted it with polyurethane and had these ready. Same with the, the PLC um, uh, trainers, the smaller trainers. Um, we ordered, uh, Will ordered, I'm going to sit up here for a second. Will ordered a load of um, parts from Automation Direct, Servo City, um, McMaster Car. They came in a load of boxes and we just basically, uh, each table we just sorted them out. This is the linear actuator, so um, they used exploded assemblies for that. This is the base, this is the sorter and the candy and so on. So, um, Patrick, can you, do you mind telling me what, what have you done in the last uh, day or two? Um, it looks like you've just gotten the drawings out uh, and it looks like you're just uh, starting to... Uh, just um, uh, putting together the base for the components. Pretty much here we had bin rails here. Din rail, yeah. Yeah, din rail and then... Um, Pressure regulator. Yeah, the regulator and then a couple of wire racks for for the wiring went on. Yep. Yeah. How did you cut this? Uh, this comes from open bills. How did you cut this? Uh, we used a, well, not a hacksaw, it's a bandsaw. Bandsaw, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, bandsaw. Now, now you, you could use, just as easily use a hacksaw for this. The dimensions are on the drawings. So what Patrick is basically doing is uh, just drilling holes based on the dimensions and uh, putting it on the base. So. So this is day two, and uh, you can start to see uh, who. Uh, Jacob, did you did you put these modules uh, on the on this PLC trainer? Uh, yes. Yeah. So how did you do that? <laughs> you took them out of the box I took them out and of you the just box screwed it in. It's not hard. I yeah. They, I'm they, sorry. They click, I saw that they clicked together and then they just clip on the dim rail. Yeah. The one thing was getting the lights on these. Yep. There's. You can't really see it once they've been mounted. But there's a little collar there, isn't there? The, uh, yeah. Yeah, get, getting that in was is a bit of a pain. Yeah, yeah I remember so this that. right here. Yeah. So what uh, Jacob said that he did was he filed down yep. that little piece in there yep. in order to get the metal part that attaches to the base. The collar to, to sit in, yep. yeah. And then, and then you're screwing this, I think, yes. to tighten it up. Yeah. Yes. Lovely, lovely. Um, yeah, so, so what else can we say? Um, so basically have all the parts ready from the three main suppliers. Um, they've all... Yeah, so you got this from 8020. Um, we have a laser cutter in the lab next door and uh, um, that's going to give us all the plates where each of these stations are going to sit on. Um, I'm going to nag uh, Will Schwab here and see does he, does he have any advice for instructors. Will. Um, 
I'm sorry to bother you. Do you have any, do you have any advice, uh, instructors for the capstone, or do you have any thoughts? Well, I mean, you know, I guess the important thing is, you know, if you have your drawings, we have our drawings all set up on the back wall. Yep. And those basically just have the drawing along with, you know, it's basic assembly with exploded assembly, and it's got the parts list. Yep. And the parts list is the main thing. And you know, once you have, obviously, the, to get all the parts that we need is important. But then to have the drawing because these are a build to print. Yep. So we're building to these drawings, and that's important to have those drawings up on the wall so, and so they can see them. So, so um, the the you ordered from the three main suppliers. You put that in yeah. before the the semester kind of started. Right uh, before the semester, most of our parts are from Automation Direct and McMaster Car, and those come in like a couple day delivery. Now we have some from uh, Servo City and also Open Builds. Yeah. Or Open Builds is basically the linear actuator, and then uh, the Servo City is a lot of stuff to deal with the uh, hopper fill mechanism. And the little drive and the pulleys and that we use on that. Now, uh, so I saw you showing your the, the class how to use the laser cutter. The the there is a laser cutter that, that is going to print that is going to cut those black acrylic pieces. Yes. If you don't have a laser cutter, you can subcontract that out that out to um, a, a company that does that. I I can't think of the can't think of any off the top of my head. You could use plywood. You could use a quarter inch plywood and actually cut that out. Right. Can, uh, drill it, do it by hand. Yeah, you can, uh, you know, come up with some type of parts. You know, we have, uh, most of those are just flat plates. We yep. have a bunch of them that are flat plates, and you can use any type of material and just make sure you get the holes drilled in the right place. Exactly. Now, we have about three or four that are specially shaped, you know, to push out the cup. It has a special shape. Now, those are a little harder to make. Um, More intricate. Yeah, they're a little bit more difficult, but yep. uh, you also uh, this year we decided to to subcontract all the three D printed parts with Shapeways. We do have a couple of three D printers in, in the college here, but for a couple of hundred, what what was the entire? Do you remember? Was it a couple of hundred dollars for the entire set? For the entire set, uh, it's about four hundred dollars. Okay, and that'll get you one set of all of the uh, parts. Delivery is a couple weeks. Yeah, and I think I think that's I think that's a sorry here. This thing is the focus. Uh, I think that's the way to go. Um, it just makes life a little bit easier. For you know, we have the 3D printer, but it, as far as time, uh, it takes a long time for our 3D printer to chug away. Um, yeah. You know, I'm sure that Shapeways has a number of machines that they can just use and knock them out pretty quick. Yeah. Yep. So it's a lot more time. It's a better use of our time. So this is this is um, thanks, Will. This is this is day two uh, of of um, this build here, and uh, so what I'm going to try and do is, as this project progresses, I'm going to uh, film the the updates and the progress of of these chops. Stupid camera.